Halloween is upon us again, and Board Games and Brews is celebrating the season of fright and mischief with Cthulhu Death May Die by... Come on, games? Simon Games? CMON? Ah, whatever. Come on, man! Set in the Lovecraftian universe of ancient gods and tentacles, Death May Die pits one to five players against a slew of occultists set to bring about the end of the world by summoning, you guessed it, the big boy himself. Along the way, players will need to do their best to hone their skills, manage their health and stress levels, and above all else, ration their sanity, because it just isn't Lovecraft without a few people going insane. Pushing yourself to the brink of insanity to fight and kill the great old one is going to take nerves of steel with a side of iron grit and a pair of huge brass balls. And if you're short on any of those, might I suggest some black and American whiskey to help you along. Coming to us from deep within the New England region of the U.S., black and American whiskey is the first of its kind, having been selected and remixed by master distillers using black brandy casks and music from the band Metallica. Yeah, I know. I'll explain in a bit. Just take a drink for now and shut up. We got some ass to kick. Death May Die gives players six different adventures to choose from when they set up to play. They're labeled as chapters, but they're not linear. You can play them in whatever order you want to. No matter the chapter, the object of the game is simple. Disrupt the ritual, kill the Elder One. Each chapter comes with its own unique layout using these double-sided stage tiles along with its own unique combo of lesser monsters and conditions for winning the game. Pair any chapter with the items in the Cthulhu box and you're good to go. Players also have the option to use Haster as the main villain instead. This gives Death May Die 12 different ways to play the game, with even more variation depending on the characters you play with. Players begin with three basic skills that they may enhance by losing sanity. As the game progresses, things will happen that will slowly drive your character further and further into madness. Once you reach a certain threshold on your insanity tracker, you get to level up one skill. Which skill you choose will depend on what your particular needs will be during the game, so choose wisely. Players also start the game with an insanity card. Each card comes with a special condition that will affect and afflict your character during certain moments within the game. Combat and other such actions are carried out using these three black dice which will result in one of four different outcomes. Successes and hits, failures and misses, a loss of sanity, and a bonus success or hit but only after certain conditions have been met. As the game progresses, you'll gain access to these green bonus dice as well. These dice will come in handy as they give you the chance for more hits and successes without risking your sanity levels. Don't like the results of a roll? Well this is where your stress comes in. A player may spend any level of stress to re-roll any number of dice. This can be the difference between killing or being killed, clearing a room, mitigating your sanity, or completing objectives, so it's definitely worth doing so long as you have the stress to spend. If a room is free from enemies, players will have the option to search the room for items. Each chapter has its own unique stack of items designed to give players a slight edge in various ways. It definitely helps to have at least one item on you at all times. Like in most co-op games, each player's turn is followed by a series of things the enemies will do to brutally fuck you, and this Mythos deck is what's going to make you wish you brought the lube. Some cards will bring enemies right to your space, while others will mess with your stats or just make your mission that much harder to complete. Each type of enemy has its own special ability and dice combination it will use to attack with. Many of the abilities will push your insanity further to the brink, while others do additional damage, and some even set the room and you on fire. God damn! When three of these mythos symbols are revealed, the cultists have come one step closer to completing their ritual, and the Elder One has moved one space along the ritual track. When the Elder One crosses into the red spaces, he's been summoned, and will move from the track onto the board itself. Now that the Elder One is on the board, this is a perfect time for some more Blackened American Whiskey to give us all a tad more courage. Blackened American Whiskey really is a one-of-a-kind brew. Starting with hand-picked bourbons and ryes from some of the most renowned distillers in America, the pre-finished whiskeys are blended based on their complementary flavor profiles before being further mature than casks originally used for black brandy. This gives the beautifully honey-amber-colored whiskey undertones of dark apricot throughout, acting as a perfect complement to the burnt caramel, honey, and spices already present in the brew. Now, blending and recasking whiskeys is nothing new within itself, but this is where Metallica comes in. While the whiskey matures in its brandy cask, the barrel is attached to a subwoofer designed by the band in order to bring out those deep sonic lower tones Metallica is known for during their shows. A playlist of the songs is compiled by the band members themselves for each batch of whiskey made. The songs selected depend on the low frequencies desired, which in turn depend on the particular blend of whiskeys sitting in each barrel. Once the playlist is selected, it is blasted through the subwoofer. 
These booming low frequencies move the whiskey and barrel in a way so that the whiskey blends deeper into the wood, bringing out and enhancing certain flavor profiles, aromas, and overall character of the whiskey. These frequencies also help shape all these big, bold, and deep elements of flavor and aroma into something surprisingly smooth and easy on the palate. Every sip is going to take you on an amazing journey from front to end, but nothing is ever going to feel overpowering. This makes Black and American whiskey ideal for sipping by itself or as part of your next whiskey cocktail. The fusion between age-old distilling techniques and the science of sound waves has been dubbed Black Noise. No other whiskey in the world has been sonically enhanced in this way before, and you really can tell the difference. It also happens that Metallica have many lyrics throughout their catalog that reference Cthulhu, making its pairing with Death May Die a perfect match. You can pick up this multiple award-winning whiskey for anywhere between 30 and 50 bucks, depending on where you look. Alright, bottoms up. We got an Elder One to kill. Both Elder Gods have four different stages that must be defeated before players can claim victory. Every stage has its own set of health, as well as various effects designed to fuck you even further, and a number of dice used when attacking. Every stage revealed is applied in addition to the stages revealed before it, making the Elder God more and more powerful as he gets closer to defeat. To win the game, players must kill the Elder God after the ritual is disrupted, but before it can be finished. Players will lose the game if the ritual marker reaches the end of the track, or if all players die before the Elder One is defeated. You can also lose the game if anyone dies before the Elder One comes onto the board. Players die whenever their health reaches zero, or they reach the end of their insanity track. Unlike in most co-ops though, the game doesn't necessarily require all players to survive. In fact, it's likely that at least one person is going to die, and that is definitely by design. Towards the end of the game, your character will likely be so damaged and insane that the only thing left to do is one final heroic sacrificial attack. If you're going down, you're taking this motherfucker with you. Or at least making a big dent. Players still win the game if everyone dies so long as the Elder One dies at the same time as the last player standing. Now let's talk about the most obvious part of the game. These miniatures are fantastic. Each figure is made with incredible detail, and there are a shit ton of them. From dramatic facial features, to countless finer details, and all the way down to Cthulhu's barnacle cheeks. No detail was spared. The game itself can be absolutely brutal and unforgiving. Teamwork is definitely essential to ensuring a victory. Even if you don't have five players, you may still want to use five characters. You're going to need all the help you can get. While it is a difficult game, the artwork is incredible and the theme is very strong. All this, along with those amazing miniatures, helps you to fully immerse yourself within the Lovecraftian universe. Death May Die is definitely an Amerithrash dice chucker with simple mechanics and gameplay, which might not be everyone's thing. There are a lot of Cthulhu and Lovecraftian games out there, most notably Arkham and Eldritch Horror. They offer deeper and more complex levels of strategy and gameplay, which may be more up your alley. But while definitely a simpler game, Death May Die feels more like an accurate Lovecraftian adventure. Elements of fear, panic, and an overwhelming sense of impending doom and insanity are everywhere. Not everyone is going to make it out alive, and those who do will be so lost in their own madness that death might have been the better option. Now the size of these miniatures in comparison to the game tiles can be problematic. Oftentimes you're going to find your adventure looking like this, which is pretty fucking insane and definitely not aesthetically pleasing. But outside of that, Death May Die offers an intense yet fairly straightforward experience that is true to Lovecraftian form and ideal for newer and more experienced board gamers alike. While a bit on the pricier side, this game offers both quantity and quality, making it a worthwhile investment. With all that said, Board Games and Brews has given Cthulhu Death May Die an 8 out of 10. For our money, no other Cthulhu-driven board game out there gives you the theme, intensity, and atmosphere that stays so true to form, while also being easy to learn and looking damn good in the process. Make sure you have plenty of Black and American whiskey on hand as well. Even if you're not taking on Ancient Elder Gods this Halloween, this incredibly smooth brew offers all the sweet spicy flavors and dark smoky undertones that will pair perfectly with any of your spooky holiday plans at a price that won't break your bank either. For Board Games and Brews, I'm Bryce Castle. Have a great Halloween, and we will catch you at the table next time.